In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at strong and weak electrolytes, and what we'll end up doing is just kind of walking through a virtual chem lab. Since it's our first practice, I wanted to walk you through an example. So all I've done so far is just kind of clicked my icon, the virtual chem lab, and I open up to where we see three doors. We have organic chem, the general chem lab, and the stock room. The other slide here you're seeing is the handout that went with this, the 4-1 strong versus weak electrolytes. All I want us to do is kind of get an idea of how to use the um, program so that as we progress through the year we become more familiar with it. One of the easiest things to do to find the correct place in the chemistry lab is just to click this um, workbook and just kind of leave it open. Over here on the left hand side of this page you'll find the um, virtual chem lab, VCLs, and I notice that we're being assigned 4-1. So I'm going to click here, and here's all the chapter 4 related um, virtual labs. Strong and weak electrolytes matches the title, so this is the one I will, I'll click. And that brings me into the titration lab is what it's called. So step number one here, just clicking the virtual chem lab, selecting strong and weak electrolytes from the list of assignments. You'll do that by opening the chem lab book right in the opening, um, opening frame when you click your VCL icon. So now your screen probably matches mine here. Step number two, if I look over here, it's saying enter the stock room by clicking inside this stock room window, and then once there, start looking for uh, the reagents. We're going to need sodium chloride, sodium carbonate, and sodium bicarbonate. So we're going to go into the stock room, and we'll do that by clicking over here. And just giving it a second to catch up, and now this is the screen that you've got. Notice on the shelf we have a variety of chemicals waiting for us. Step number two, it says click and drag down to the shelf the sodium chloride. So here it is, NaCl, and just kind of hit it to one of these highlighted areas. We need Na2CO3, it's called sodium carbonate. Now there's two versions of it. Be sure that you're getting um, the 100% and not the 47%. So down here, sodium carbonate, drag it to the shelf and then sodium bicarbonate, which was right over here, baking soda. Alrighty, so we have the three jars sitting here on the shelf, and it says click the go back to the lab arrow. So I'm going to head back. Notice where the three reagents now are just sitting in the window of the stock room, and this is uh, our lab bench. Going on to step three, and just kind of thinking where we are in terms of procedure, for each of these salts that were selected in the stock room, we're going to complete the following procedure. We want to double click and drag the bottle to the stock room counter and just move it next to the balance. So let me model what to do there. Let's just test the sodium chloride first. So I put my cursor there and I click it on and just drag it to the highlighted area next to the analytical balance. I want to zoom in on the balance, so I just click on it and it should make the balance come up a little bit bigger. I'm going to take a little piece of weighing paper and just click and drag to the scale and the directions tell us to tear the balance. That's just a fancy word for zeroing the scale. Alright, so we've zeroed the scale, tearing the balance. If I put the cursor up here, I can remove the lid and this might be the trickiest part is grabbing the scoop and just bringing it down the front of the jar to gather the contents there. Alrighty, so here I've got about a gram, and I just click and drag and let it go. So about a gram sitting on the scale. I'll just zoom back out. See this drawer down here where it says, says beakers? We're going to click that drawer, grab one of those beakers, and you might as well put it directly up here on the stir buddy. Alrighty. Next, over here, we have some graduated cylinders, and right now, from the 5 mil, here's 10, 25, and 50 mils. Our directions, as we're reading them, tell us to take 25 mils of water. Alrighty, so again, we're just kind of skipping here. Uh, move the beaker to the stir plate, add 25 mils of water. Let me model how we would do that. If I just grab the 25 mil grad cylinder, place it under the sink, Hear that water pouring? It turns right into that grad cylinder. So now it's reading that it's full. Click and drag that grad cylinder to the top of your beaker and just pour that water in. 
Alrighty. This point we want to turn on the stir plate to create the solution. So I just click that on button and notice the little stir buddy is spinning, creating a homogeneous mixture. Over in this area, we have two different probes on this lab bench. We have a pH meter and we have a conductivity probe. This is the one we want to use. And I have to turn the switch on actually first, turning the conductivity meter on, and we should see a window appear here. Right now it's reading about zero. Grab that conductivity meter and just place it into the solution of sodium chloride. And we're looking to just get a reading. Sodium chloride, a strong electrolyte, dissociates when we place it in water. Placing the conductivity probe into our solution. What did I do? Oh, you know what I did? I never poured the salt in there. The salt is still sitting on the balance. Let me back out. That won't work. So, put this back in. No wonder it's reading zero. It's just pure water. Put this back up here. Grab the salt and get it into the water. We probably have to zoom in. There, I got it. Now the salt is in there. Zoom back out. Put it back on the stir buddy. Get it spinning. And now we should get a number that makes sense. Drop it in there and bam, there it is. A good reading for conductivity. I knew it couldn't make sense because zero for sodium chloride when it's a strong electrolyte just isn't a number that makes sense. So what we're going to do, see this value here, the NaCl in our data table? We're just going to grab the 42.15 and just simply record it there. And we keep going. Says we've got a lot of testing to do. Now the easiest thing here is just drag that conductivity meter back and I'm going to place the beaker just right into this red container. That's how we're going to wash dishes in the virtual world. We'll put back the sodium chloride and the lid will go on and let's test the second compound, sodium carbonate. Put up a fresh beaker and just grab it here so we can make that into a solution. Zoom into the balance so you can drag that on. Click the lid to take it off. This is the part that takes technique. Taking that spatula and just drag it across the label to pick up the compound and just plunk it on the scale. and It'll be about a gram. Then pour that into the beaker and zoom out. I need to pour in 25 mils so I'm going to put that under the faucet. Pour it in and get it to stir up. I need the conductivity meter and here's the um, value for sodium carbonate giving us 65.78. And again, that's the number that I'll record in this section for Na2CO3. We do this over and over testing each one of these compounds. There will be a total of eight trials you're testing with the conductivity meter and just simply recording the value. The value will be over here in your conductivity meter. When you need to go back into the stock room, remember just drag this up here. Going back to the stock room, just click that area. You have to put these guys back and again it, uh, they go into specific regions so you just want to keep track of where you put them. And when you want to grab the next ingredients, um, we're going to need some ammonium chloride. We're going to need some potassium nitrate. Here it is. And we're going to need some, what, ammonia, NH3. So any of these um, are up in this area. Whatever you need to test, just plunk and drag. It'll only let you take three items at a time. So um, when we look here, just over and over, go back to the stock room to test the acids and the weak base ammonia. So you'll have finished this virtual experiment when you, re when you have written down, tested all eight compounds and simply recorded their value. At that point, of course, your task is to turn this over and kind of process the questions that go with it. Even the lab quiz is assigned for Virtual Chem 1. Again, purpose of this video is to just get you familiar with the Virtual Chem Lab and where to find things.